also, I had time to try the food. Who's the, is this the deli that did this? I think they deserve a, a round of yeah. 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 Especially uh, the sandwiches. I really like that rolled sandwich. That was really lovely. Uh, as you can see behind me, this is the original painting that I did. It took seven weeks. I completed it in seven weeks. Uh, but I researched it. It took me quite a while to research it. And um, it's called America's River. And I wanted to do something. I was, I was commissioned by the Dubuque Rotary Club to do something to celebrate their 100th anniversary in Dubuque. And of course, anybody who knows about the Rotary knows that they contribute a lot to the community uh, in not uh, bricks and mortar projects, as well as they've cured polio uh, practically in the entire uh, world. And now they're working on uh, water projects and things like that. So I'm a Rotarian, and they, it, it's right in my wheelhouse of wanting to be uh, uh, altruistic and uh, generous on, on a grand scale. And so they approached me and said, what would you do to celebrate, uh, you're, as an artist, what would you do to celebrate uh, the Rotary Club? And I said, well, I'd do a painting. And, you know, I'd like to do a painting, maybe something epic. And uh, <laughs> certainly large, that might be epic or not, I'm not sure. But anyway, and I, uh, I said, uh, and, and that, that's what they had in mind. Actually, it was Craig by team that, uh, that approached me, and he, he was uh, past president of the Rotary Club. And he said to me, uh, what would you paint? And I toyed with a lot of different ideas, but I thought, you know, when I joined the Rotary Club in around 1999, we, I was involved in a project, a couple of projects right off the bat. One of them was the America's River Project. This is when Wayne Norman and uh, Jerry Ensler, both Rotarians, came to a meeting once and said, you know, we've been to Mystic Seaport out in Connecticut, and we saw what you can really do with uh, what would otherwise be known as an industrial riverscape. And we'd like to put in recreational opportunities. We'd like to maybe you know, develop this. And we need some seed money so that we can turn this into something. And for those of you who knew what the riverfront looked like, and I painted it back in the 1980s uh, from uh, that Indian mound that's right across from uh, uh, the ice harbor on Jimmy, the old Jimmy Kachivas' property up there. And uh, I, I set up a little uh, stool or a little uh, uh, folding chair, and I, I painted uh, a watercolor of the, wa of the riverfront, which, by the way, the original is at the Dubuque Shooting Society hanging in their pool room. And it's a good thing I enjoy pool because I see the painting often. <laughs> and um, the, uh, uh, that painting had in it uh, the ice, uh, it had the brewery, which was, by the way, a ruin. Uh, and uh, then there was where this is, it was the Fisher Ice Company, which is basically a big shed that they used to cut the ice out of the ice harbor during the wintertime and store it and then you know, deliver it to homes and businesses. And the, the, the flood wall was there. The flood wall was there indeed. Uh, but there was a little else. There was, of course, uh, uh, over here, Newt Marine and uh, Pillsbury and all the other things that represent the riverfront, which was basically a, an agribusiness riverfront. And uh, so uh, I uh, 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 thought, this is a great thing. It's going to change the face of Dubuque forever. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, I had a little different vision at the time, but it didn't matter. And in about, oh, by the time they, uh, uh, you know, that money that we gave them, which was $50,000, uh, the Rotary Club gave them $50,000, then the $50,000 grew because it kind of, the Rotary's involvement in the project gave the whole project kind of legitimacy, and pretty soon all the other money that they needed to develop this, up to $42 million or something like that, was contributed to help develop the riverfront into what you see here. And uh, uh, that came from state and federal sources. It came from other clubs and organizations. It, it, was, uh, it was a momentum they needed to really get this, this project started and underway. And the whole idea was is to, you know, we do have a flood wall indeed, but, you know, we do have a wonderful dike system that could serve as a walking path and all these other amenities that you see here. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, this is interesting is Davenport decided not to build a flood wall because they didn't want to deny access to the river by the public, you know. Well, they've been fighting floods every few years, just catastrophic floods, and uh, that cost them way more than this flood wall costs, I'll tell you that. And is anybody really denied access to the river here? I don't think so. 
I think it looks pretty cool. So as you can see, I've got a kind of an agenda when I start these paintings. I feel like I really want to make a statement uh, about uh, the wonderfulness about, you know, wonderfulness and the kinds of things Dubuque can do when everybody pulls together. Um, and I even, you know, left a little bit of industry in here. These are molasses tanks, which are, by the way, full of molasses. And this is uh, Newt Marine. That's their toxi. He, he came to see this painting when it was a work in process. And uh, I, I just wanted to look at it for accuracy. And he said, well, those roofs look pretty new. I don't know what he was meaning by that. But anyway, it, but he was glad I got his little, ex, you know, his little uh, crane in there and that type of thing. It's, it's all in the details, if you know what I mean. Um, Gary, how did you, you choose this perspective? Uh, there's a story there, right? Well, that's, there's a great story there because I, when I was, I was inspired by, uh, when I painted this, I was inspired by uh, Joseph Walter and, uh, and Alexander Simplot. Alexander Simplot was, of course, the famous Civil War veteran and uh, he was from Dubuque, and he uh, came back to Dubuque and started a, a fairly substantial uh, architectural design and engineering firm. And uh, he, you know, these, these men drew visions of Dubuque's, uh, uh, the city of Dubuque, for various things. And they uh, did them really from, an, uh, they, they took an elevated perspective. Of uh, and, and most of it was done from their imagination because they didn't have a plane or a helicopter or anything like that to get the view. Another thing that inspired me was Grant Wood and his famous landscapes and etchings from uh, the 1930s. He would always take an elevated view of, of, of the countryside and you know it looked like a grandmother's quilt was thrown on the bed and it was all loopy and you know how it looks. And, uh, and then, of course, you'd see the curvature of the earth, the slight curvature of the earth. And I wanted to show that type of perspective. I, I, that, that's what inspired me. I always wanted to do that. And um, so I was going to do this painting from the bridge. Well, you know, that's going to be kind of impractical. So I hired a drone. I, I had uh, Garth Furstie. I don't know if you know him, but if you're on Facebook, he's always on Facebook. And I went to Garth, and I'd done a project with Garth once before. And I said, Garth, uh, let's, six in the morning, we got up in the morning, six o'clock, here's, here's Garth and me, I'm waving, and there's, there's, there's me right there. I'm like Alfred Hitchcock, I've gotta be in every movie. But anyway, so uh, he, he, we met at 6 a.m., and uh, uh, sunrise was at 6.30, and as the sun was rising, and, and things come to life down here, people start walking and running on the path, and, uh, but the water is, this is unusual, uh, in, the sun shines, uh, you know, from the east, and there's a slight prevailing westerly wind, but it, that sun comes in there, and it literally it, it illuminates the clouds and, and the sky. If the sky is blue, the water's blue. If it's uh, like this, with peachy kind of uh, lines and, and, and hints and things like that, they end up in the foreground, almost a mirror image. And so, uh, Everybody think. I mean, it, it looks like the tropics. It's so cool, but you don't see the muddy Mississippi. I, I, but it's it, it's that morning light that you see this. You don't see this any other time of day. And there's little hints of brown, you know, the the, the, the true color of the river. Uh, but you uh, only see that in the shadow areas, in the deep shadow areas. So I, I observed this many, many times uh, from getting up early in the morning and the other two uh, uh, landscapes that I had done similar to this one. By the way, the second one was right after they opened uh, the Grand River Center, I did the, uh, uh, in 2007, it was the Grand Excursion, and many people own that paint. We had a thousand prints made, and we sold them out. They're all done. I, I'm done with the last 50. And uh, that was uh, the famous re recreation of the great uh, Grand Excursion that involved trains and ships and boats and all kinds of things like that. And, I, and that painting hangs at the Dubuque Museum of Art, or not, not I mean, the Dubuque Mississippi River Museum. It hangs uh, right next to the, uh, uh, as you walk in, it's on the right-hand side near the uh, gift shop. And it, it's, it, that's one of my most successful uh, paintings and prints of all time. And uh, so that uh, didn't have all of these other amenities, uh, but uh, like the the gazebo, which, by the way, the city named after us and put 
uh, the Rotary Club logo on it when it was constructed in honor of our contribution at that time. So that was that was really nice. So the view that I took to create that curvature and create that perspective, I wanted to be able to show the old city, you know, the the, the traditional view that we have of the city, and then and then have us be able to see this aspect of it also, uh, the, new, the new part, and try to keep it in, a, in the proper perspective, and that's how that worked. And, uh, and, and now, now Newt's gone, you know, he's out of there, so there's no more industry there. It, it happened that quick. And uh, so there's where we are. I, I, I'd be happy to entertain any questions you have or uh, comments, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the, with the result. And uh, incidentally, before you leave, make sure you take a sheet off of our table over there. Uh, the Rotary Club ha is selling prints for uh, $79, and we have a bonus print offer today, the uh, Dubuque Main Street print. We also are uh, uh, making available the um, uh, framed versions. And these you get through Creative Touch. They've been my gallery for 45 years, uh, framing for me. And uh, they have uh, three levels of sophistication on how you might want to have that framed if you don't want to even think about it. Uh, and then you can uh, have them do that for you. And uh, very reasonably uh, priced, incidentally. So is there any questions, uh, anything I can uh, answer about it? Gary, tell us more about the drone. How did that, how high up did it get? And oh my God, it can go thousands of feet. Uh, Garth Bursty is my, my drone guy, and, uh, and he's gotten in trouble with the drone on occasion, so we have to be real careful. But they've since, uh, uh, I guess, loosened the restrictions on them, and if you get some kind of certification, which isn't really uh, very sophisticated anymore, you might think it is, but he had to actually have a pilot with him on occasion when he flew it, but not now. Uh, now he's free to fly it, uh, and uh, there's just a weight restriction, and he's well within that. Uh, I don't know what the weight restriction is, but that was one of the things. But yeah, there, you know, he has it. Many other people have drones too. I, I noticed, uh, you know, there's some friends of mine here that uh, uh, Ron Tiggis is over here. Right here. Uh, he's got a drone. Do you have a drone? Do you have a drone? Yeah, he has a drone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm toying with the idea because I love the idea. I love that perspective. And the drone went up about, uh, I think it only went up about uh, 150 feet is all. That was it. And uh, the results, and we had to take several pictures in order to get it all in in one shot and then lace them together. But uh, that served as my reference and it worked out pretty well. Now, for those of you that want to see me actually paint this picture, uh, it is on my website, GaryOlson.com, and you will see the uh, entire process from start to finish uh, in about 25 minutes. I've sped up the film so that you can see it uh, uh, from start to finish within a reasonable amount of time. And uh, that's how it works. And it does very well. Any other questions? Sir? Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about it. It was a uh, real labor of love. And make sure you pick up this. You can, by the way, order prints online. The money that is raised for this goes to the Humanitarian Grant Fund, uh, Foundation or uh, grants for local, all local uh, nonprofit organizations who can't seem to find enough money to do some of the projects that are really exciting to do, but uh, it didn't budget for. So we come to the rescue. And there's some wonderful, wonderful projects that we've gotten behind, I got to say. So it's really worth, uh, worth it. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. We certainly appreciate the Rotary Club's support as well here at the museum. So, well, Ralph, we're going to turn it back to you. <laughs>